Hello everyone, I'm Mark Snodgrass and today I wanted to go over the new data flow triggers that have been uh, recently released in Domo and how you can take advantage of them and things to, to watch out for. It's a nice new feature that gives you uh, some more flexibility into when your data flows are going to run and how often and help you to kind of so monitor costs as a uh, you have to watch out for how many times your data flows are being executed. So you'll find uh, these settings uh, when you go to your a data flow and then you click on the settings tab and you greet it with something like this. And when it's in this state, if you don't see anything here, then that means your data flow is set to manual. So it'll only run when you click on the three dots and click on run. If you wanted to add um, a uh, trigger, then you're going to want to just click on add trigger and then you can choose one data set update or um, on a schedule. And then if you choose one data sets update, you can say, hey, uh, I wanted to pay attention to one or both of these. So if I've just got it set to one of two selected, so then it's only going to trigger based off of when this data set that's checked um, gets updated. It won't pay attention to anything at all to when the data set two is. So that's uh, similar to what it used to be like when you saw like your choice of check boxes next to you, all the data sets over here, and you could um, just select which ones. So this is kind of standard to how things used to be. But you can add conditions now, which is a pretty new feature and pretty helpful. I'm going to delete this trigger and take advantage of uh, some of these commonly used ones, so it'll build that out for me. So you see it uh, uses the trigger of when data set updates, and then it's got both of these selected, so it's going to look at both of these data sets to potentially trigger. Then when it does that, then it's going to next evaluate this condition, and we can have a data set have updated. I think it's going to be your most commonly used one, but you could um, also set by, you know, when the current time is a uh, certain range or something, or the current day is a certain uh, range. And then here it's going to say, hey, do you want to look at uh, both of these or or one of these? And then since the last successful run. So I think this is the most common scenario you might use. So what this is going to do is going to check, hey, um, did one of these get updated? And then it will go to this condition and then look at both of these then and say, hey, is the date stamp on both of these uh, more recent than the date stamp on this trigger? So if we went over to history, it would look at this uh, date stamp and see when it ran. So to kind of show you that in action, we've got those both selected. I've got these two data sets over here. And if we edit uh, this one, and let's just put in a new entry. Let's put in 11 one 2022, and that. And then if we go over to history, uh, unless I had uh, updated this one more recently, which I don't think I had, we can sit here and uh, watch nothing happen essentially because data set two has an older timestamp than this. So it's not going to do anything. So we haven't met both of those conditions to trigger that data set update. So now if we went to data set two now and updated that with a new value, just put in something here and put that in and hit save. Now both data sets have been updated since we last ran this. And if we just give it a few seconds here, I believe we should see, there it comes. So now both of those conditions have been met and that, that says, okay, now I can run this data flow. So that's um, how the, it gets, gets evaluated in making sure both of these are true since the last successful run. It's also important to note the time zone up here, important to set really the time zone that you are in and what your, your kind of computer clock is. 
Um, you'll see on here if I go to one of these. Um, the Pacific Daylight Time, so that's the time zone I'm in right now, and that's what it's looking for. Found when I uh, initially had this set, um, our instance is set for East Coast time zone, and when I had updated both of these data sets um, after my initial run, it didn't kick off, and because it was evaluating this as an East Coast time, um, and so I said, nope, uh, it's up. Uh, not uh, it's not been more recent, so I'm not going to update. So I had to adjust this to be the time zone I'm in. Because these times times that you're seeing on the history tab are in your computer clocks time zone. So that's important to note. So you've got those options, and I think um, it's really going to be the main one. If you wanted to just look at one of these, then it would just then compare that condition on just one of these since that last successful run. If you get to that, if you only have two, then really I would probably delete this condition and just look, uncheck this and just really go based off of sim sample data set one. I wouldn't try and overthink things. Um, so I think you could get yourself in a position where nothing's um, getting triggered because you've um, set maybe some conditions that might not truly be met. Um, just to show you what these are, so you could switch to current time and then just make sure, hey, I only want it to run between these uh, times during Pacific time or the current day is. Like I maybe don't want it to run on the weekend even if um, data has been updated. I don't know how often those will get used, but uh, I think it's important to point out that those are an option in here. So, um, and then you've got also these in the, rather than the since the last successful run, you could say in the last, if they've been last updated in the last one minute or one hour, one day, or within last um, couple minutes of each other, then kick that off. So um, I think you'd have to kind of have a good sense of your data here to know, you know, if these would be the criteria that might be, work. But my sense is that this is this is going to be the most popular option to be used. So. Hope you found that helpful and uh, feel free to reach out if you have any questions. Thanks a lot.